What is up guys? Today we're going to be looking at Burp Suite by the makers Port Sweater. So Burp Suite is a suite of penetration testing tools focused on web applications and websites. So it is a bunch of tools, uh, proxies, intruders, repeaters, sequencers, and decoders, and it's all fit into one small and concise package, and that is Burp Suite. Uh, so we're going to be going over installing Burp Suite. We're going to be going over the UI, how to use it on a very simple level. And then I will also be showing you guys the Burp Suite YouTube. Um, they have some great videos and they go much more in depth than I'll be going into today. But without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is install Burp Suite. So you can see I've done this before. Can I spell? Yes. All right, so there are three versions. There's the community version, professional, and enterprise. So if you are working for a company, make them get the enterprise version because there's a lot of stuff that you're going to be missing in community. And even in professional, you're going to be missing quite a few things. So if you're working for yourself, you're a freelancer, I recommend professional. And then if you are like me, a student who is broke, go for community. So we're going to get community down the latest version. They don't have Windows 32-bit, which I'm seeing a lot of uh, software creators uh, making the move towards is only 64-bit uh, softwares and applications. So make sure if you are running 32-bit that you update your system. Um, they do also have Mac OS X and Linux. There's also a jar that you can build yourself. So we're gonna be grabbing Windows 64-bit. We're gonna download it. It does take a second. It's about 200 megs, uh, so about 0.2 of a gigabyte. And depending on your internet, it could take a quick minute. Anyway, we're done. When you open it, it brings you to the installation wizard. Um, we're going to update it just because I already have it installed. Um, if you did a new installation, it's going to ask you if you want a start menu. You're going to say yes, because there is no desktop shortcut. So if you want to run it easily, I would recommend creating a start menu tile for it. And we're going to click finish. So as you can see, there's no desktop application, nothing installed. Um, so we actually have to open up our windows and click on the tile, or you can search by typing in typing in Burp Suite and opening it. You don't need to run it as administrator. It doesn't need anything like that. You can just run it as a normal user. So we're going to be running a temporary project because you cannot run saved projects. Uh, that's because they really nerfed the community edition and it's kind of sad to see, but they got to make money somehow. So click next, we're gonna use Burp defaults, but you can load um, settings for a configuration file before making a project, even a temporary one. And we're going to start Burp. So we are greeted by the dashboard. Now Burp has been kind enough to give us a default passive crawl proxy. Um, and this is on HTTP insecurebank.com and HTTP da vulnerability dash website.com. Um, these are just two default websites that they have some issues with, and it just shows you the issues tab, the advisory tab, bottom right, and the event log, bottom left. Uh, it's just an easy way for them to show you what things should look like. Um, I'm not actually sure that these are real websites, uh, even if they are just like websites that Burt made, um, I'm not sure. So moving on, we're going to move to target. So this will fill up as you start using Burp. So if you did a, if you're using the proxy and you went to google.com, the target will fill with google.com, fonts.google.com, api.google.com, and it will go through a bunch of connected websites and all the get and post requests that you made. Um, also in target, you have scope, so you can either add something or remove something from scope if you don't want it included in your sitemap. 
And then you also have issue definitions. So these are common vulnerabilities, uh, web exploitation stuff. So if you see something like source code disclosure, then you can click on the issue definitions, go to source code disclosure, see which C, they're usually called CVEs, but I guess in web exploitation, they're called CWEs. You learn something new every day. Click on the CWE and you can see how to exploit that specific issue. Um, I think this is a great add-on to Burp and good job to the developers for doing this. Moving on, we're going to proxy. So proxy is exactly what it sounds like. It is a website proxy. So before your request is sent to google.com, it is sent to BERT proxy and it shows the get request or post request. And then you forward the request to Google and now your web page will load. So let's try that out right now. I'm gonna open a browser. It uses Chromium by default and it is built into to BERP. Um, there is a way of using your default browser. So if you want to use Mozilla or Chrome, you can actually click the help and then getting started. Configure BERT proxy to work on an external browser. You just click that link. It'll send you to a video or a document and it'll show you how to do that. But, but we're going to use Chromium for now. Uh, let's go to everyone's favorite website, google.com, hit enter, nothing happens. That's because our intruder, not our intruder, our proxy is working. So you can see, this is our first request, HTTPS accounts.google.com, and it's on port 443. And there is the Google server IP address that I am trying to send my request to. Uh, we can see that is a post request, um, blah, 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 blah. The host is accounts.google.com, origin, blah, 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 language encoding. So we're going to forward this request. And we're not going to see anything happen because there's actually multiple requests that happen when you go to load a web page. So we're going to keep forwarding and eventually it will get some stuff to pop up right about now. So now we can see there are some things popping up, but we can still see that Google is still loading. So if we click, keep clicking forward, we will actually get the full fat entire web page. Uh, Google is notorious for making you keep making post and get requests to actually load the entire page. And it's slightly annoying when using Burp, uh, especially Burp proxy. But now that we've loaded it, we can now go to HTTP history, which is the next tab over. And we can see all of our get and post requests. Um, this is very useful when you forwarded past something that you wanted to stay on or something you wanted to send to another part of Burp, you can actually go back and say, hey, I wanted to send this to repeater. You can go click on it, control R or right click and send it to intruder or repeater. Right clicking also allows you to add that site to scope. So if you go back to target here and you can see site map, site map and scope, we can see that our site map is now populating with Google websites. Uh, if we go back to proxy, right click, add the scope. Yes. So go back to target scope. And now we can see that this website is in our scope. We can also exclude websites from scope. So we can remove it from scope or if we right click a separate one, we can, we should be able to exclude it from scope. Maybe not. You might have to do that manually. There's also a WebSockets history and options. This is options for your proxy. So if you wanted to change the interface that your proxy is running on or whatever you would want to change for your proxy, you can do it there. So now let's send something to Intruder. So let's go back to HTTP history, google.com, and let's send that to Intruder. So intruder is for when you want to exploit your target. So you found the CWE, the common web exploitation vulnerability or whatever. Um, and now you have a payload ready and you want to send it to your target. So you go to positions, go to payloads, you add your payload. Um, in this case, it's just a list. So if you want to do a brute force attack, um, you would put the list in there. 
set the options, set the positions. So you can do sniper, battering ram, pitchfork, or cluster bomb. I'm not sure the difference of each, but in a normal admin panel, it's going to say something like uh, pass equals, and then you'd have your variable here, and then it'd have like an and sign and it'd say user equals variable two. And you would put those in the, there's a variable notation. I don't know the variable notation for verb suite, but it looks something like that. And then it would take your word list and substitute the variables for the words. And it would send that over and over brute forcing the admin panel on the target website. So that is what intruder is for. It's also for other things. It's not just for brute forcing admin panels. As you can see, it's not just lists. You can do runtime files, dates, numbers, brute forcer, bit flipper, um, any of that kind of stuff. So now we're gonna go back and we're going to grab a different one and we're going to send it to repeater. So you can see the tab lights up orange. We're gonna go to repeater and we can see that we have our request and we also have a response tab right here. All right, so in repeater, we can change the request. Um, we can do whatever we want to it and then send it and we can either see the response here or we can send the response to the browser or decoder or sequencer or whatever. So if I wanted to change requests, so we have English right now, we're going to send this to comparer and then we're going to make this Espanol, send it and also send that to compare. We can open up compare and see the difference between them. So let's compare the words. And now you can see the difference is the date, uh, the age of the request and the alt SVC. But other than that, nothing's really different because I don't think I changed language effectively. I think there's a little bit more than just changing N to an S. Um, I'm not sure. But that is comparer and repeater. Uh, next is sequencer. So sequencer one likes to look for sequences, um, patterns in post requests and get requests, um, stuff like that. I've never used sequencer. I've never seen a use case for sequencer, but I know it's useful. Otherwise they wouldn't have it in Burp Suite. Uh, there are three tabs, analysis options, manual load and live capture. Moving on, we have decoder. Decoder is awesome because I, on a regular basis in a CTF, am either decoding um, web, uh, web encoded traffic or base64 encoded or something that is URL encoded, hex, octal, binary, or gzip, and it has all of these built into it. So if I went and I hex or base64 encoded something, let's do that right now. So let's go to base. 64 encoder, yep, it's there because I use it. We're gonna encode something. So please like and subscribe. If I can type and spell and talk at the same time, we're going to encode it and it looks like that. So guys, if you haven't already liked and subscribed, make sure to like this video, hit subscribe. It helps me out. Make sure to also hit that little bell icon to get notified. We're going to control V, paste it in, and we're going to decode as base64. And we can see, please like and subscribe. We can also smart decode it. Is it smart decoding? It's not smart decoding, is it? It doesn't want to. Sometimes you can smart decode and it will do that automatically. Not sure why it's doing that, not doing it right now. I might be doing it wrong. But anyway, moving on to comparer. So we already looked to compare a little bit. Uh, we looked and we compared two different get requests. Um, I showed you words. The differences in the words. You can also look at differences in the hex. Um, and then you can also look differences in the bytes, which is the same as hex, but it, it, it looks a little bit different in the window. Let's close this and let's move on to extender. So extender is really cool. Extender allows you to 
install your own plugins and apps onto Burp Suite and use them. So if you wanted to write your own application for Burp Suite, you could do that, or you could be a normal person and go to the Burp App Store. Um, you can sort by rating and popularity. Uh, there's some really good applications on here, things that you wouldn't even think of and things that you know you're gonna need for your workflow. And it's really cool that they allow people to make applications for their software. Good job, Burp Suite. Uh, there's also APIs and different options. Moving on, we have project options and user options. So project op options would be more for something you're only gonna use once. Uh, if you're on site somewhere for a penetration test and you only need it for that specific project, uh, then change the setting for that. And then if you are at home and you just want to change your options for your everyday workflow, make sure to change it in user options and not in project options. So that is everything you guys need to know about Burp Suite for right now. Um, if you want to learn more, uh, Port Swigger on YouTube is the creator of Burp Suite and they have a great YouTube channel that goes super deep into Burp Suite and how everything works and how to use it. So if you guys like this video, again, hit like, get subscribed, hit that bell icon to see my future videos, and I'll see you guys all later.